Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Augusto Perez on with me. We're going to continue our topics for the last couple of days. In case you don't know him, he's been having angel visits, and God has been speaking audibly to him, giving him over 35 dreams and visions, and also taking him to heaven one occasion where he told him audibly that he is giving him a rod to lead people through the turbulent times ahead. He's author of four books, pastor to church 20 years. His book that has all of his dreams and visions, uh, 35 of them, something like that, called Smile, Jesus, Love You. Yes, is available through the Prophecy Club. Now, We've already talked about beheadings in Mexico, spiritual warfare, in the last couple of broadcasts, also the attack on the U.S., cannibalism. However, today we're going to bring it on the positive, the uplift. I want to encourage you, so does Augusto, we want to let you know that God is quite capable, if we are in the will of God, of protecting us. Right, Augusto? Absolutely, Stan. What, Absolutely. What has he shown you about now? This is not a pre trib, mid trib, pre wrath rapture, folks, but what has he shown you as far as how he can protect people in the time of trouble? Okay. First of all, before I enter into that thing full, uh, fully, Stan, uh, let me share this that a couple of years ago, the Lord sent two angels from heaven to show me and say to me specifically that there was great darkness coming upon the face of the earth. They spoke that to me three times. But then he also said there's uh, a lot of activity taking place in heaven right now. The more I prayed about this uh, in, the, in this last two years, the more I came to realize that there are very dark times coming upon this whole earth. Very, very hard, very difficult, very troublesome times. Oh, yeah. But it has to come. It, it has to come. And, 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 the, and the Bible says, talks about it. And even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, said, that there will come great tribulation. But I was told that there was a lot of activity in heaven. So we know that there is something happening in heaven to assist us to go through these things that are about to happen, and not only to assist us, but to empower us. When I was praying about this, repeatedly, the Holy Spirit told me that people, my people need to be prepared. Because if they're not prepared, if they're not walking close to me, if they're not perched from sin, if they're not living in repentance, uh, cleansing from sin, and walking close to me, walking in my presence, when this darkness descends, it is going to engulf them. They will not be able to resist it. Okay, so I have been trying to share this with the people. Get close to God. Forsake sin. Repent of sin. Clean up your lives. Start living for the Lord. Be full of Him. Be full of the Spirit. Start flowing in the Spirit. In March of this year, I had the experience, I began to share it in the last program, where the Lord gave me a word where He said, the internal glory is going to be revealed at 12 midnight. Well, 12 midnight is the darkest time of the night. So I researched that. I found that out. I started connecting the dots. And He was trying to show me that at the time when this thing gets its darkest, this thing gets at its worst, that is the time when the internal glory, the Holy Spirit, we have been given the Holy Spirit. We have the glory of God dwelling within our heart. Many of us sing about it in churches. Many of us talk about it. Many of us quote scriptures. But do we know it? Do we know it experientially? Do we know it for a fact? Are we aware of this fact, this glorious truth, that His glory dwells within us? And we are able to manifest His glory, and we will manifest His glory, and the Lord showed me is going to come at the darkest time, at 12 midnight. I believe that when all these demonic entities begin to be manifested all over the earth, it's, it's begun. All these <laughs> uh, zombies and all these people eating flesh and eating organs is disgusting. It's beginning, but it's not fully manifested yet. When it is fully manifested, and this demon in human bodies begin to be manifested, all these principalities, all these things that are going to be revealed on this earth, Nephilims, hybrids, what have you, they're going to be revealed, they're going to be manifested. When these things begin to be manifested, I believe this is when we 
the true sons of God are going to be manifested as well. When this Amen. eternal glory is going to be revealed. Because the concepts that people have about this whole thing, Stan, you know, just take me out of here, Scotty, zap me out. But we're in this thing for the fight. That's right. <laughs> we're we, going we, yeah, to see this thing we, we, we want in that fight, but we want God to be with us in his power. We want in the fight, not a- out of it. A- Amen. I mean, I mean, we are in, we were enlisted in the army of God. So what to evacuate us? Please. That's right. What we don't understand is because the Lord does not reveal everything; He just gives us bits and pieces. He is not going to leave us defenseless, and He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to forsake us. But there's got to be something that happens to us that empowers us or transforms us that we are able to do these works that he has been speaking in the Scriptures forever, in all the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And so the Lord has been giving me little snapshots, little snippets of this thing. And I'm telling you, it's going to be glorious. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, there's a Scripture there that I have been really diligently studying in the last several months. It says, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And then it says, verse 17, And if children heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer for him, that we may also be glorified together. Then he goes on to talk about the sufferings of this present time are now worthy to be compared. And then in verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creation awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Wow. Well, what is creation waiting for? Creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the glory in us which will be revealed. And he goes on to talk throughout the whole chapter that the earth, the whole earth, the whole creation is groaning and travailing in pain. We're seeing the earthquakes. We're seeing the volcanoes. We're seeing all these sounds all over the earth, groaning sounds, strange sounds. We're seeing strange stuff in the heavens. This was all prophesied by the Messiah, all of it. And then he talks about in verse 23, he says, not only they, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grow within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, that is the redemption of our body. If you read the whole chapter, he goes on to talk about many of these wonderful promises that he has given us. And uh, I believe we are going to see a tremendous empowerment of his true children, of the people of, of the overcomers. This may not happen to everybody, Stan, okay? I'm not going to kid the people. I'm not going to lie to them. There's Christians out there, and they're living in sin. They're backslidden. They're not praying. They're not filled with the Spirit. This is not them. They're not going to go through this. They're not going to see this. This is for those that have been over, uh, the overcomers, those that are walking close to him, those are, that are prepared, anxiously... Waiting. In the will of God, and have a prayer closet. I've got to add that. <laughs> and they have to have a prayer life. If, they don't have a, if we don't have a prayer life, a relationship... Let, let me just say this. Again, I interviewed Michael Baldea here three, four weeks ago. And he had not released anything for two and a half years, and I was so blessed and complimented that he would release this one dream, and he released it actually to me before he even released it on the website or to any of his supporters. Now, I did hold it back uh, for a week or so so he could get it out to his people first because that's the way it should be. But essentially, this was the dream. It fits in exactly with what you're trying to say. He said, I had this dream. He said, I was walking down this sidewalk, and to the left, to the right, just about as far as you could see in either direction, he said, uh, it was as if a 200-mile-an-hour wind had hit the area. In other words, it blew down uh, houses, trees. The only thing that was standing was maybe bricks, concrete steps, just the real heaviest things, part of a house, mostly just the foundation of a house. And he said, and the road began turning left, he kept walking, and he walked on down, and there was this one house that was standing. He said, it was a little charred, he said, but it was still standing. It even had a one of those swings that you sat on and swing on the front part of the porch. He said he walked up and was trying to figure out why would this house have stood when all of the other houses in all directions had been blown away. 
And as he got closer, he began to hear people praying. He said it was like the prayer meetings he used to have over in Romania. And I've been in some of those prayer meetings. I know you have too, where you stand in, uh, in, in a circle, you're holding hands. And I mean, you're praying sometimes silently, sometimes you're praying quietly, but sometimes you're praying at the top of your voice. And he said, and then the dream ended, and he said there was the angel. Of course, he called him a man, uh, but it was an angel at the foot of his bed. He said, do you understand? Michael said, well, uh, I, I think so. And he reached up and touched Michael's shoulder, and instantly, just like that, he was back in the dream again. In other words, apparently Michael didn't understand. So he said the dream started over. He was walking in the same place, same sidewalk, same neighborhood. He said only this time the children were running and playing. There was birds in the air. There was trees. It was a normal American neighborhood. He kept walking down the sidewalk. The sidewalk turned to the left just like it had before. He came up and found the same house as before. As he got close to the house, he said he could hear the same praying going on in the house once again. He said, then he woke up. There was the angel at the foot of his bed again. He said, now do you understand? And he said, yes, I understand. Now, I'm going to ask you out there listening, do you understand? And Augusto, do you understand what that was saying? I'm sure you do. Absolutely. Those people that are called by his name, that are calling to him, that are passionately, okay, really seeking after him, those are the ones that are going to be uh, protected by the Lord, those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. Dimitri Uh, told me a joke. He said, two men ran across a bridge. He said, the first man, he didn't pray. He just ran across the bridge. Second man, he stopped, got on his knees, prayed a real fervent prayer, asking the Lord to protect him as he crossed over this bridge. Halfway across, the bridge collapsed, and he died. Dimitri said, how's that right in the eyes of the Lord? I said, I don't know. He said, the first one, he prays all the time. He said, the second one, he only prays when he's in trouble. Oh, absolutely. This is the only safety that we have. We have, the only safety is in him. You know, I've been praying like everybody else, you know, Lord, you know, uh, am I in the safe place? Uh, Lord, do you need, do you want me to move? Lord, what is it you need me to do, Father? And, you know, like everybody, we have moments of, of insecurity, moments of where we fear, where we have certain fears. And so we need a, a confirmation from the Father. We need a, that a word that strengthens us and confirms us, you know, and says, listen, everything is going to be all right, just trust me. And he spoke a word to me, Stan, and I'll never forget it. He said, son... There is no place of safety outside of me. And he said, where you are, that is the place that is going to be a place of safety. You you make a place safe because you are mine. I like what Michael Boldea said to that question. He said, every Christian on the globe has exactly the same place of safety. He said, in the will of God. That's right. Well, that's the only place where we are safe. Is in his in his perfect will and in his presence. He said, "You son, sanctify the place where you're at." We'll be right back after this message. If you would like to find out more about our vision to find oil in Israel, call eight seven seven six four five four seven seven two. That's eight seven seven oil Israel or eight seven seven six four five four seven seven two. That's 877-OIL-ISRAEL or 877-645-4772. There is no obligation. They'll send you out a free packet explaining our vision. Karen Anderson spent 10 hours a day for 10 years, 5 hours a day for 20 years, learning the secrets of Revelation from an astronomical point of view. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, says the Bible. She says the book of Revelation is a call for the tribes of Israel to return by explaining the story of the Son of Man coming from one end of heaven to the other. By understanding Jesus' role in the heaven, it helps us fulfill our role on the earth. Many men have tried to read this message, but it is hidden until the appropriate time. The stars are a second witness to the Bible designed to be understood now. A letter from God to us to prove Jesus is the Messiah. Explaining this story called the Word of God and Jesus is the Word. Topics are the purpose of the earth, Bullinger's witness of the stars and Clarence Larkin, the wedding feast, the offerings of the temple and the man, the sickles of Revelation 14.14, the great seal and its secret purpose, the great pyramid and its role in early Christianity, 
five DVDs, almost 10 hours, valued at $150, all for a gift of just $50 or more. It's the Astronomical Book of Revelation. Call 785-266-1112. Five DVDs, 10 hours, Astronomical Book of Revelation. Gift of $50 or more, 785-266-1112. And now, back to the program. Well, and in his presence, he said, You, son, sanctify the place where you're at. The place doesn't sanctify you. Your presence, the presence of my, of my children, those that are mine, those that are my elect mine, they, wherever, wherever they are, they consecrate that place. They sanctify that place. They make that place a sanctuary of safety, not the other way around. And that, that was just a revelation to me. That was just too much for my brain. I realized what happened in Goshen <laughs> in the days of the plagues of Egypt, how the children of Israel were in Goshen, not far away from Pharaoh and his armies were, and yet they were perfectly safe. They were only affected by the first three plagues, Stan. Only the first three. After that, they were not touched. We are going to be maybe affected by some things that may come in the near future. I think that we're going to have to go through the things that we have to go through in order to make our wedding garments white. Yes. And if our wedding garments are already white, then maybe we don't have to go through any of it. That's correct. That is correct. And those are uh, the, the people that I was mentioning before, the overcomers. They that overcome the Church of Philadelphia, those churches, that are, those people that are consecrated, that go after the Lord, that they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. And so this is a truth that we need to hold dear to our heart, because the times are upon us when we're going to need this every day. We're going to have to make our calling an election sure. I have gone through more examina- self-examination this last three years, Stan, than I ever have in my whole 30 years walking with the Lord. Yeah, tell me about it. I understand, brother. <laughs> I have had to go through, I mean, the purgings, and Lord, show me if the, the whatever, the, my priority. Four years ago, he began to deal with me about this. Son, it's time to come into alignment. And I didn't understand what he was talking about because I was serving him. I have been serving him ever since I was born again, 30 years ago. I didn't know what he was trying to tell me. It's time to come into alignment. I wasn't fooling with sin. I wasn't running around with other women. I wasn't drinking, boozing. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't. I was living a good life, a, a Christian, godly life. So, but he told me it's time to come into alignment. I have been really doing a lot of soul seeking, generational curses, soul ties that I may have had still in my life, things that I may not have confessed, areas that I maybe were in the wrong priority in my life, maybe issues of pride, all kinds of things that the Lord has had to deal with me. Whenever we talk about repentance, Stan, the first thing people think about is sins that they commit, okay? Actions, actions, sins that we do. And they looked at their lives and said, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, okay? And they haven't. There is more to sin and repentance than that. And it has to do with uh, the way we are. It has to do with our nature. It has to do with with our our lifestyle. It has to do with our personality, the way we react to instruction, correction, uh, with our pride, with unforgiveness, many of these things which are not obvious. And so these are the things that the Lord began to deal with me about. Amen. So As a matter I, of fact, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you, and if you answer it, I'll answer it. Uh, one time somebody said, hey, do you think George Bush is really a Christian? And I said, I'll tell you, if I could have just three minutes with him and ask him one question, I can tell you. And they said, what's that? And I said, the question I would ask is, what is the Lord dealing with you on now? Because he is always trying to lead his children in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He has always got a list in our heart of things he wants us to change. That's What's right. he dealing with you on right now? With me? He's dealing with me, Stan, on walking in brokenness and in humility and forgiveness. Give me Myself an example. promotes all stains of life, of course, which we all deal with, but he wants me to walk in humility and brokenness 
and, and, and forgiveness. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> that's a big one for me. I, I'll tell you, the thing that I need work on more than anything is love. It has never been a high priority in me. I, I, from a very early childhood age, it's always been a challenge. And that's what he's working with me on. However, I'll say this. I interviewed Maurice Scalar, and I began reading some of the visions, and one of the visions told about a man that had been given a great mantle, and the man, probably he was saying it accurate. He said, God gave me this mantle, and man, I was convicted in my heart, and I, matter of fact, I asked pray, uh, Maurice after, after the radio program was over to pray with me. I repented to him, another man of God. I said, you know what? There's been too many times. When I have said, God has called me to do this or that, especially with the oil vision. And man, I, I told Lord, I repented for a long time. <laughs> and I said, Lord, please forgive me of that. And please let me do the things that you've told me you're going to do. And he's confirmed to me that, uh, that I'm still going to do those things. So apparently he forgave me or didn't hold that against me. But I'll tell you what, I, I don't go around saying I'm Apostle Stan Johnson anymore or I've been guaranteed I'm going to be finding no oil in Israel, none of that stuff. I mean, uh, he's really right. got after me about humbling myself. So, mm -mm, I'm yeah. just another vine dresser in the vineyard, brother. That's it. That's it. Just a servant of the Most High. And, uh, and that's basically what we are going to be. The, the Scripture says when we are up there with him in his presence, we are going to cast the titles we're going to cast our crowns we're going to cast That's all right. of that things that he's thou art to. worthy O lord to receive power right. and glory and honor <laughs> that's right and and the thing that we need to understand also stan is that the, the positions and the ministries and titles and everything we have is for a season is to serve mankind down here is for uh, to serve him and the kingdom and uh, all those things will cease to exist there are things which will never cease to exist, and that one of them is love. Love will never cease, and he's dealing with me about that, too. And, you know, we continually have to walk in that love because love is the most powerful thing, the only thing that has the ability to destroy the enemy completely. Nothing else has the ability to destroy him. No other gift, no other grace, but love has the ability to wipe him out because he can't do anything with it. Satan cannot do anything with it. So it is very powerful. And um, All right, now let me tie that back into the whole topic. At the end of this broadcast, I want you to know that if you are in the will of God, if you have a prayer closet, if you've got your wedding garments white, you know, all of the things. If you're walking right with God, then do not fear the things ahead. I don't care what comes up, God is going to be there. Now, we can't guarantee you're not going to go through any trouble. I mean, Peter went through gladly. I mean, well, he didn't want to be crucified like his Lord. He was crucified upside down, said he wasn't worthy. Okay, but God will give us the strength to endure anything that he assigns for us to go through. And I'm not one to say, oh, no, Lord, uh, you, you, I don't want to go through any trouble for you. You know, if the Lord assigns us trouble for his glory, then we're all going to raise our hands and say, let it be, Lord, let it be. Amen. But on the other hand, he is quite capable of taking care of us. If we have gladly served him now, we have those white wedding garments, we are in the will of God, we have a prayer closet, we know how to worship him, he is number one in our life, then we need not worry about this trouble that is coming. I want to hear that. You, listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Do not worry about this. Do not lose sleep over it. Lose sleep over, are we close enough to Jesus? If we are close enough to him, him, then we need not fear the things. Are you hearing me? Are, we need not fear the things that are coming. Amen. Scripture, Romans eight eighteen comes to mind as you were speaking, Dan, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And this ties in with what the Father showed me. All the sufferings that we may have to go through, they are not worthy to be compared Amen. With, the th with the glory that we're going to be, re it's going to be revealed in us that we're going to be a partaker of. So rejoice in the Lord, every one of you that are listening, rejoice in the Lord all the time. And, Again, uh, I say rejoice. Amen, amen, <laughs> and amen. So I know that I tend to be negative, and I tend, because I'm a watchman, okay? And I think no one's listening. I think people aren't paying attention to me. I'm sure, Augusta, you feel the same way sometimes. That, yes. uh, you know, they're not listening to the message. And, but, you know, God has 7,000 people that haven't been to the knee to bail, okay? So there are people that are listening, and praise God for you. But I just want to lift you up. 
I want to leave you high. I want you to know that there is a God that can feed 7 million people out of thin air for 40 years. Give them water out of a rock, oh, mind you, okay? It wasn't coming up out of the ground under the rock. Uh, Ron Wyatt said that the rock literally is about 50 foot tall, split in two, and there's a big area there about the size of a large beach ball that that's where the water, it didn't come up from under, it didn't come out of the ground. It was formed out of thin air in the crack of a rock. Okay, so if our God can feed and water some 7 million people in the desert for 40 years, then we don't have to worry about what the devil can throw at us. Right. We have to worry, are we close enough that he will lead us beside the still waters? Okay? Amen. Amen. That's really all that the Father has really put in my heart. The time of warning, like you know, we've been doing now for many years, it's over. Now is the time to really prepare for the things at hand. And the way we are preparing the people now is like this program we just had, encouraging them and sharing with them what they need to do to get prepared and get ready. We need to reach higher that we've never reached before. We need to begin to empower the people. We be, need to begin to really encourage the people to flow in the spirit and the supernatural because this is the only way we are going to be able to go through these things that we're about to see, not only go through it, but do great exploits. Amen. Because he will. Great harvest. We will be hoping with a little help. Well, brother, I have loved having you on. I have to have you back again. Amen, Stan. Thank All right, you. folks, you've been listening to Augusto Perez, and if you'd like to have his book, Smile Jesus Loves You, then call Prophecy Club 785 266 1112. Just a twenty dollar donation. If you'd like to have the next 911, the DVD that I've made, call Prophecy Club. They'll tell you how to get it, or you can also find it online. In the meantime, thank you for listening. And thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Karen Anderson spent 10 hours a day for 10 years, 5 hours a day for 20 years, learning the secrets of Revelation from an astronomical point of view. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, says the Bible. She says the book of Revelation is a call for the tribes of Israel to return by explaining the story of the Son of Man coming from one end of heaven to the other. By understanding Jesus' role in the heaven, it helps us fulfill our role on the earth. Many men have tried to read this message, but it is hidden until the appropriate time. The stars are a second witness to the Bible designed to be understood now. A letter from God to us to prove Jesus is the Messiah explaining this story called the word of god and jesus is the word topics are the purpose of the earth bullinger's witness of the stars and clarence larkin the wedding feast the offerings of the temple and the man the sickles of revelation 14 14 the great seal and its secret purpose the great pyramid and its role in early christianity five dvds almost 10 hours valued at 150 dollars all for a gift of just $50 or more. It's the Astronomical Book of Revelation. Call 785-266-1112. Five DVDs, 10 hours, Astronomical Book of Revelation. Gift of $50 or more, 785-266-1112. As prophecy students, we know an emergency is heading our way. And the average person can go over 30 days without food, but no more than three days without clean water. In the event of an emergency, you must have clean water almost immediately. One of the primary causes of death in emergency is not lack of food, but rather drinking contaminated water. You can run water from a mud puddle through a Berkey and drink it. You can have clean water when others are getting sick from drinking bug infested water. Your filter must work without pressurized water or electricity, which is why the missionaries choose Berkey. You can get a Go Berkey for $139, but I recommend you get the Royal Berkey with four filters for $364. I personally use the Crown with eight filters for all my daily water needs. A Royal Berkey looks like a large stainless steel coffee pot, 9 inches wide by 20 inches tall, with four black filters. It processes over a gallon an hour for a gift of $364. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for the Royal Berkey, 785-266-1112, or the Crown Berkey with eight filters. Or see the entire line of Berkeys by going to prophecyclub.com. 